Hey guys, before we start this video, I just wanted to go over a quick uh, few important announcements and stuff that's kind of going on here really soon. Um, we are doing the 210 crate. We added 10 more crates. We're doing a 210 crate opening um, live on Twitch and TikTok. I'll link those in the description below. Uh, we're doing that Saturday, this Saturday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, apparently they expire, so we're going to have to do that. Uh, so I figured Saturday would be the best time. 7 p.m. is usually when TikTok and Twitch are doing a little bit better. So I figured I kind of want more people to be there because it's like 200 crates. Like who wouldn't want to be there? Uh, and then a couple other things real quick. I'm going to link the Discord down below if you guys haven't already joined the Discord. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video because I did bring on Exotic, one of our mods in our servers, and he plays uh, ground with me quite often. So he has quite a bit of uh, experience in the A10 early and late playing both of those in uh, GRB. So it's going to be a little bit of a longer video. We're going to be explaining a lot of um, things we went through and uh, our experiences and what we think of the A-10s. So uh, without further ado, here is how to play the A-10 in Ground Realistic Battles in War Thunder. All right, so do you want to start off with uh, comparing the uh, A-10s? So yeah, just going up like the, the stats of it. I mean, what I got written down, it's, it's the exact same performing plane. Mm -hmm. The performance with on it is pretty much the same as the late um mm -hmm. obviously the only two big things are the uh the repair or the repair cost and the uh efficiency with those yeah two the, vehicles. the crew cost the repair cost and then the efficiency percentages i know the tech tree one is 464 percent for research and 330 right now for money for uh, silver lions for me mm -hmm. and then the other one is 678 for research and 660 for silver lions yeah, and then it so also um, all depends as well because whenever I first started using the A10, because I started using the A10 at like 8, 7, like I would up tier myself that bad because I wanted to play it that bad in ground. Um, <laughs> I noticed like, and you might not notice this right away. I mean, it's obvious, but I didn't really play a whole lot of casts until I started using the A10. And uh, it only is going to do uh, research for planes. So uh, whenever I play tanks or whatever, you know, I'll play like in the Abrams and then I'll get enough to get in the A10. And if I last the whole game in the A10 and get 30,000 RP, maybe like 3,000 of it is going to the Abrams and like, and like actual tanks. And then the other 27,000 mm -hmm. or whatever it is, is going to like my aircraft tech tree. So yeah. that's a huge thing that I like picked up on. I was like, oh, okay, well, sweet. This is an easy way to grind planes as well, but uh, especially yeah. with the premium one. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've been doing a lot of casts like in the propeller planes. I love doing that. And I when we switched over to a point where I could use the A-10, I realized that I was doing pass more because I wasn't dropping two bombs and then had to fly mm -hmm. all the way back, you know? Exactly. I, I was able to use the guns, use the missiles. And I mean, I never used the bombs on the A-10, but you know, you have that option. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so moving over into the armaments thing, uh, side of things, uh, if we're looking at the early, we get a lot of different armaments. Uh, obviously you have your customizable, uh, you know, armaments you can favorite and whatnot. That's what I have up here. Um, so, for example, if I ever, well, when I used to play air, I've never played this thing in air for, like, the last four months since the uh, huge map update. <laughs> but I have the, uh, the like, a one full base loadout, and I have, this is my biggest loadout that I always most commonly will use, which is hydras on the end, hydras in the middle, and six 500-pound bombs. I love this, um, this setup. It does really well. Um, I've never really had any big issues with it. Sometimes it's like, yeah, you'll drop your bombs or you'll only use your bombs or only use your rockets before you get shot down. Cause playing in the A-10 is a very complicated plane to play in. Um, especially with mm -hmm. the fact that anybody can be in anything shooting you down. It's not like there's just medium tanks on the ground. You got to worry about, um, you know, different spawn stuff like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. Especially those, the two S three eights, the two S three eights. Yeah. With their proxy rounds you'll just die without even hearing the bullet and then after it's just like oh, okay cool two s3 eight. <laughs> you'll, you'll fall you'll fall apart like uh the lego noise and everything <laughs> oh yeah um so looking over at the rest of the armaments for the a10 you have the basic lineup which is going to give you uh, missiles with everything um the aim nines l's which are 30 g's i love using those in ground they're good for taking out helicopters um they're really good for taking out other aircraft as well uh, the one thing i actually love 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 about ground is it's a sim battle for air in the sense it's a third person sim battle so you don't actually get to see the range on people they don't get to see the range on you you have to hunt people in uh in ground rv which i love you can't just see their username from a mile away um yeah. that thing's huge i, I love that I, 
I actually really like that you brought that up because, you know, it makes it a little bit more challenging for an A-10 person to uh, be safe, mm -hmm. you know, because you got the AIM-9Ls for protection, but, you know, everything's hunting you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. A-10s are, like, definitely one of the most sought after um, things to kill uh, from, like, a Russian or German perspective. Whoever you're playing against, it's one of the most sought after things to kill. A, because they can, they can really... Uh, mess up your team you know if, if it's going against you and b because they're like so big they're easier to shoot down as well so and it's not going over yeah, you at well. like ma so yeah exactly yeah. um but anyways we have the uh six two thousand pound bombs i've never ever found myself using this or any of these uh, i never usually generally use two thousand pound bombs i might start doing it i've thought about it actually really recently i'm just making like a little <laughs> lineup for it but it depends. Oh, those, that's really situational. That. Really situational to use those bombs. That's like if you got to get someone that's like right around the corner and you need like a bigger explosive mass. Um, moving down the line, we got the four GBUs. Uh, the GBUs are really interesting to play. I played them for like the first time. Um, well, not the first time, but you know, for the first time actually like playing, playing them because I played them a little bit and I was like, eh. It's definitely a way different type of play style and it's a really dangerous play style for A10s, but we'll get into that a little bit mm -hmm. later. Um, and you just have your basic, you know, your bombs, and then your a AGM 65Bs, and then your rockets, and then obviously you can customize certain things. One Another thing that um, uh, comes up with the armaments to hit ground targets, as they put it in this game, versus the multi-purpose weapon, um, you get the two extra 20 mil gauss. Now the one thing about this, I was actually playing around with this earlier, and I'll show you guys a clip right now of it. Um, I knew this, but I didn't know it was this aggressive. The amount of recoil and pushback oh these things God. put on your cannon <laughs> is actually insane. I would never... It's only 20 mils. If there were 30 mils, I'd get it. Maybe I'd put them on and have fun, have a little bit of fun and whatnot. But for only 20 mils, I mean, it's a little bit of extra ammo. But I feel like you have so much ammo and you won't live that long. I mean, how many times, Exotic, have you played um, in your A-10 and you've lived like longer than 10 minutes or like 7 minutes even? Jeez, I, I don't think I've ever used all the bullets in my 30 millimeter at m more than one time, maybe. I was going to say, when I was doing it, really good and there was no SBAA. Exactly. I've done it very few times where I actually run out. Because you get the seven, it's like 1174, I think, mm -hmm. for the exact ammo count. It's uh, a lot. Yes. So you guys have plenty of ammo to use. Plenty, plenty of ammo to use. And then obviously, like, equipping small things like rockets and stuff won't check up your... um. Uh, spawn points a whole lot either which is super nice and then um i mean there, there was a point where i was only using the third the 30 mils because i knew i wouldn't survive that long in the air especially when the 2s38 exactly. like first came out and it, it was everywhere i, I was that, like there's no point i do that way more often than not i will um i will go into the, with the a10 i'll have even if i have like say like 1500 1700 1200 800 spawn points because usually i think the mavericks are about 800 spawn points to get missile yeah like two like a9s that. and six mavericks even three mavericks is still 800 spawn points they don't take a cut yep. for anything no nope. uh, which i was surprised by at first when i first saw that i was like maybe if i put half on they'll cut it down no so if you want to use the uh the agms it is like about 800 something spawn points depending on your up tier and whatnot um mm -hmm. You guys can see I have 1,100 battles in the A10. I play this thing every single time I play a ground match. It's so like my Abrams. I have six every single match of the Abrams I've played in the A10. Ninety, like oh, okay, maybe like 89 percent, 90 percent, whatever. Like, because there's some games where you know I just get yeah. absolutely <laughs> ugh, and destroyed on. And the MBT, I do the same thing as well. Lavat everything. So I'm constantly using this A10 in ground. And I, like I said, I even use this A10 when I was playing like way lower battles and whatnot. So it. Yeah, you can look at my ground targets, 2,700 ground targets um, to a 945 death ratio. That's how I calculate the A-10 because it's a strike aircraft and it's really a strike aircraft. Like, this thing's not meant yeah. to dogfight. So I take in perspective the ground targets to death ratio versus the air targets to death ratio. Because if you think you're special for, like, being a 1,001 in air targets to deaths, it's, I don't know, I don't think it's that like important for air because again it's a strike aircraft you're focusing on ground targets you're not focusing on trying to kill um anything besides maybe like a cheeky little frog foot or something that's like trying uh -huh. to come up behind your mig or something like that um those are your two biggest or, threats really or, or that one annoying for helicopter air. in the back of the map yeah for air targets there's a couple of things um speaking of helicopters i'm actually gonna write that down on my notes because there's some helicopters we should go over real quick 
we'll go over that uh, last. <clears throat> Um, and moving over to the A10 late armaments, you have just about the same things for the most part. However, your Mavericks are the AGM 65Ds instead of the Bs, which I don't believe there's a difference besides. It's guidance, right? Because these guidance. are IR, and the Bs well, I believe are TV. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. I don't. I don't really know. I haven't used the A10 a lot. A whole, yeah, they are TV. So the guidance is different on them. Um, yeah. which is, which is a lot bigger, especially with, uh, IR versus TV. That's huge. That's, that's mm -hmm. a huge thing for missiles to track and whatnot. That's definitely a big change. Um, so there's like a lot of benefits to running either or, and I think honestly, in my opinion, um, I don't run AGMs or anything with the uh, A10 a whole lot because I'm not a big fan of them. If they're too slow, it's too much of a liability to be up that high. I mean, a 2S3, I can kill you without you even hearing the bullet from like, seven clicks away so it's not even worth it in my opinion but that's me that's my play style is in the sense boom and zoom but at walking speed because the a10 is so slow <laughs> uh um, that's like that, that, snail that's, speed <laughs> yeah that, that's a perfect way to describe it is boom and zoom and that at a, at a I, snail speed yeah i definitely am more of an up close and personal than kind of like launching mm -hmm. like arrows from across the map like you know yeah. I like to be yeah. up in their face and really supporting closed, like super close casts. Like I have been, uh, there's been multiple times where I've almost killed teammates with the cast that I've been trying to support because they're getting like their <laughs> barrel shot out and the person's trying to like drive around them. And then I'm in the A10 and just trying to like complete, oh, it's bad. It's it scary sometimes. But uh, <laughs> that, that that's why you need that precision of the gun. Speaking of, instead of using AGMs. Yeah. So the speaking, there's two things I want to touch on there with that. Um, you can kill in... Uh, GRB, you can kill your teammates with uh, oh. your own, like, anything. You can kill them with your gun in your A-10, any sort of, like, bombs, rockets, missiles, yep. anything like that. You can kill your own teammates, so be careful of that. Um, I don't know. I haven't killed a teammate, I don't think, in the A-10. Maybe, oh, well, I have on purpose, but <laughs> um, I don't know about on accident. So I don't know what the repair cost is. I don't think it's anything like air, where if you kill a teammate, it's, like, 20 grand. I don't think it's that aggressive. I think it's maybe, like, I eight. don't. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. But I couldn't yeah, tell you. It's definitely not that high. It's definitely not like 20 grand. There's. I don't think it's 20 grand at least. No. Um, no. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on was the ballistic computer. Um, as you guys can see right no. here, uh, the ballistic computer is a huge difference in um, where your gun is going to shoot because it tells you where your bullets are going to land no matter where you're at. Um, oh, well, when your gun's pointing towards the ground because you'll see whenever you're not pointing towards the ground or at least not close enough to the ground, It'll just be like your normal reticle, and then once you get close enough to the ground, it'll lock it, lock your reticle on where your bullets are going to land. So you're going to want to shoot where that's at, um, because that's going to show you where your bullets are going to land. And it really, really, really helps when you're like leading your shots um, for tanks that are moving at like 40, Absolutely. 50, 60 mile an hour that are at this battle rating. So that's a huge thing that's um, very important as well. Yeah, with, with, with the speed thing of tanks, also knowing what type of tank you're shooting just by looking at it is a huge part of using the GAO as opposed to dropping a bomb on a tank. Because some people will see, you know, something and not know what it is. But if I'm looking at, you know, a light wheeled vehicle, I'm going to just put a burst of 30 mil in it and not worry about it. Mm -hmm. But if I come up on a terms, you know, I don't have good days with terms. Those things are always surviving me. So I'll usually oh, put really? a bomb in it or a GBU. Absolutely. Interesting. They, they bully me. I don't me. tend to have problems with terms. That's interesting that you say that. I, okay, so we do a play a little bit different though. Exotic knows my belly. There's times where I'm so low to the ground that my stomach on the A-10 <laughs> will touch the ground and I'll just keep flying. Like there's times where I'll belly my plane and like it won't do like too much if it doesn't do like some damage. Sometimes it does some damage. Sometimes it doesn't. But Exotic knows I am like taking branches off the trees to stay low enough. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, yeah. I'm really good at playing like that. Uh, one of the bigger strategies that I would say is definitely playing low like that. Uh, that's huge for getting off of radar to start because you won't even be pinged on radar for certain vehicles that have radars. Like maybe the Ocelot. I think the Ocelot has radar. I think Bourbon talks about it. Um, yes. It should have radar. It only has missiles. So it should have radar. Um, but, Hon, I can actually tell you real quick. 
different things like that. Um, staying really low, but that's because I like to be up close and personal. Like I said, let me show you guys my favorite loadout. This is my favorite loadout to go. Um, I call it fuck it we ball because this is yeah, this is a baller loadout. So I got the two AM9s for protection against froggies, helicopters, anything fun like that. And then I also have the rockets, um, the bombs, anything. Now that I also resaw that, huge thing to mention really quick back up to armaments, please, if you're gonna run something like this, where you have multiple different ground, like um weapon like weaponry and whatnot that you can like rockets and bombs make sure you put on a weapon selector it will be oh, so yeah. amazingly helpful um another thing that i also do with my weapon selector is like you can weapon select between your missiles and your agms because i have those buttons bound the same thing so if i have my weapon selector on boom instead of you know doing both of them at the same time and trying to shoot a missile and shoot my at or my agm I can choose between the two and that's huge because trying to you know shoot a agm when you have like the beep 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 of the your missile trying to get you know spooling that's kind of like you know it's a huge annoyance and it kind of gets in the way because the a10 the a 9 ls they have such huge range that it covers up your whole screen i think it even cuts off at the top and bottom of your screen the the missile is like the lock range is so big or whatever that is there so that's huge as well i think so yeah but if you're not gonna heed his advice there and do that you got to bind all your keys to different things because i know you and i are different with that <clears throat> i used for to me, do number like that, yeah yeah and my, like my number one is my agms my number two is my aims my number three is my guided bombs and it sounds psychotic to some people but you know if you're not gonna take the time to put a weapon selector on which i just don't then you're gonna have to memorize all those too which people could just not memorize especially if you're a newer player mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then another thing for strategy is just like i find it best since the a10 is so slow um because i have i have different experiences with obviously much different planes i've played the a10 in, in ground and i've played the f16 in ground the f16 <clears throat> you can fly as fast as you want with the gvu drop it from 15 clicks away and it'll carry <clears throat> pretty well because it's not a retarded bomb so it won't it's guided so it'll guide its way there but it's not going to just go out and then drop straight down like the retarded bombs that we're uh, looking to see here in the next update. I can't wait to get those. I'm so excited for those too. That's going to be a game changer in tanks. Um, those, I figured, like, you you kind of, I don't know, you spawn from about 15 clicks away. I would say that a 10 degree climb angle is pretty good. And then just look around. Oh, um, with AGMs, it's a different story. You're going to want to start looking for targets right away with those because those are going to need some time to travel and to loft and whatnot. Um, the guided bombs, I'd say don't worry about it until you get a little bit closer and then probably set on your periodic flares. Uh, I run a mixed flare and chaff because of radar interference and uh, the A-10 has like five, 480 flares. So I think it's worth it to yeah. be mixed on the A-10. But Yeah, absolutely. No, when you're nope, shooting nope. The, uh, the missiles and the guided bombs and whatnot, that makes a huge difference on your location because of how vulnerable you are. That's why I don't like GBUs because like you sit right above the battlefield in the A10 just to drop a decent GBU. Yes. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I would never use a GBU from the A10 in a ground realistic battle. And you, you know, I use the A6 A6E a lot, so I'm I'm using the GBU 12s. But mm -hmm. that that plane spawns much higher than the A10 as well, mm -hmm. so you have that ability to feel a little safer from up there but yeah on the a10 i would never run the gbus personally and then one other thing about the uh the agms is the difference between the uh the maps and what you kind of want to do with the uh agms the only time i'll ever 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 take out agms is is if i'm like playing mazdoc or something something stupid yeah like stupid open you don't like any buildings like even magnet line i think it is right it's got the castle on the side that one's even kind of risky to play on because it's got the little villages mm -hmm. i think it's magnet line yeah right? uh i think i think it's magnet line I got, I got i gotta look at the maps now <laughs> yeah so do i this is ridiculous yeah the the one with the big city in the castle yeah yeah, so yeah, there's I, like, I, I, I won't you really got to be careful. Even Poland, I'll use AGMs on, but I'm really not looking anywhere near the city. Don't even waste your time looking near the city. No. Anything with any sort of like 
buildings or anything that could slightly uh, yeah. inconvenience the building or the missile. I wouldn't even worry about it. It's not even worth it at that point. Yeah. Yeah. My, my rule of thumb with AGMs is it has to be a pretty flat desert map with, mm -hmm. you know, if anything, a tiny city. If exactly. that, like the the map with the uh, the ships in the sand. Uh, oh, I'll use AGM God. there sometimes. Yeah, I know that one. But yep. even there, it's kind of people can tuck behind the ships. Mm -hmm. so, just hard to pick them off with that. Because once you fire them, they're they're going towards that target. And if that target moves, it's going to move with it. But if it moves behind a building, you know, the AGM doesn't account for a building in the fucking way. <laughs> exactly. And the thing that I've also noticed is that um, my favorite thing about the AGMs is you can fire them pretty nicely. Um, both AGMs and GBs, you can fire them from third person really nicely. The only thing that sucks about that mm -hmm. is it's much, much harder to get a physical lock on a target because it flashes and then it goes away. It's like, bah, yeah, and it gone. immediately goes away. It's ridiculous. So you have yeah, to, be like, I don't you have like to like do it once or twice and then kind of gauge where it's at yeah. to get your next time. Because I'll show you guys two clips right now. I was testing this out earlier today and I compressed twice because I was so goddamn focused on trying to lock the dude. <laughs> That I was like, oh, well, I locked him, dropped the bomb, and boom, into the ground. Because I'm so focused on just trying to get a lock. Because then you start spamming the lock button, because the ground's only getting closer. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's, I mean, you could pop your air brakes, but half the time, it's like, you should have already locked at, like, 10,000 feet or whatever. So it's, it's tough. Sometimes it's frustrating, but like I said, that's not my play style. I like to play really low, really aggressive. And stuff like that. Um, as for like things to look out for, this is a really, really important part. Uh, 2S38s, eights, obviously the most beautiful thing that they could have ever gotten. The fake tank. Um, I call it a fake tank. It's a prototype, but it's a fake tank. It's a fake tank to me because it's never, you know, there. Um, the 2S38 BMPs used to be scary. I'm not scared of BMPs anymore. They're not really anything special. Um, they, the only time you'll ever get yeah, killed by a BMP is if you're like head oning one kind of, and you're like low yep. beaming it like from a distance. That's the only time you really have to worry about them. And if they're actually using the proxy rockets, which I haven't seen used. I haven't seen either. God knows yeah. how long. But the 2S38s, because you will not hear the 2S38 rounds. You'll notice your plane getting damaged, but you won't be able to hear them. So you won't be able to see them, hear them. You'll just see your plane slowly dying. And it's by at that time, by <laughs> the time you look down, you're dead. So it's... The two S38s can be a little bit, you know, taunting, but you know, yeah. that's what, also what I look for whenever I'm just. It's like a revenge thing. I don't know. I just hunt two S38s. They're also <laughs> really easy kills, though. So you know, um, yeah. a couple other things to look out for. Really, really important. Um, the MI choppers, and I don't think the K50 has it. The K50's got up tiered, so we're, that's not really too big of a concern. Um, yeah. The MI choppers, like the MI28, and I believe maybe the MI24, they have IRCM which um will allow like you can shoot a missile at them and uh, their ircm will allow the missile to like it'll make the missile move out of the direction of their aircraft and like even if they they don't even have to flare i don't think it the ircm no. just takes the missile away so your missile yeah, will just it'll, become it'll a complete dud it. yeah it'll disrupt the missile completely um those are that's a huge pain in the ass uh especially since you know they have the abundance of flares and everything like that and they have really good guns on those choppers too um using your guns against choppers will probably be your best bet unless you're at like a 10.0 flat um using your guns against choppers will be definitely like the best thing to do uh another chopper i would say to look out for are the chinese and maybe the japanese ones i don't know which one the t the thai 19 one or something or i don't know it's the t ty something and then the Z19, which is the premium Chinese. That, that one. Z19. It, Chinese, yeah. Premium Chinese. That thing is the most mobile chopper in the game. It has that thing missiles ridiculous. that you cannot flare off. Uh, no matter how hard you flare dump, you might be able to. I mean, I've flared off a missile maybe once or twice from them, and I've died the other hundred times. Those things. Stay away from <laughs> choppers is my conclusion. Um, choppers are fun to mess with, but I definitely wouldn't say chopper hunt. I mean, if you're in the premium, it's an easy 10K, but it's a huge risk as well because they're going to yeah. have much better, um, you know, armament and everything else because most chopper missiles, you won't be able to flare off and you won't even hear them coming. They'll just hit you. Um, but yeah, other than that, stay in low, uh, try to be as stealthy as you can from as far away as you can to try to stay off radar. Um, I like to get behind my enemy before I go in. I don't try to come in from our spawn. I'll stay as low of a flank yeah. as I can, as wide as I want to, however I'm comfortable. Yep depending on the map and then I will go in from their spawn so that they're all looking forward and I you know hit them from behind and maybe even ammo rack them or get an easy 
make a couple kills that way as well. That's a huge thing. And then after that, it's kind of just a free for all. It's kind of just low blow. Um, one last tip that I will point out for you, if you're in the A10 uh, and you really, really, really want to be safe, and I do this often, don't pop up until you see that someone's been spotted or you see like one of those marker, like a live ping mark. But I would aim for more of the spotted ones because the live pings are either they got hit or killed. It doesn't really tell you. It's just like, boom, there's someone that was or is here. Um, so that's my two cents on that. I usually look for the scout marks before I will pop up and start killing shit. Cause yeah, uh, with the two or eights, you're way too vulnerable to just buzz over the battlefield. Way, 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 way too vulnerable. So, um, with how slow I you go. And, and with that, that's kind of the importance of having a squad to play with. Because when I'm playing, you know, alone and stuff, I, I, I feel a lot more in danger in the A10 popping up when people are like yellow pinging stuff. Mm -hmm. But when when you guys are making call outs where it's, hey, this guy is, you know, right in front of me. Here's the yellow ping. I'm still alive. Go get him. You know, mm -hmm. then you have a reliable source of information. And that's a huge part of the game exactly exactly um but the a10s i love using them it's like the there's like the huge like you know downsides like the two s's which are going to be your constant worst nightmare and worst enemy um and then you also have like just the slowness and that kind of thing in it but i love using the a10 like i'm never going to not use it i'm at a really happy battle rating like my lineup is pristine right now for what it is i love this lineup i'm not too worried about even progressing much farther i'm i'm uh what am I researching even? I'm researching the ADATs just for fun because it's, I'm getting the most research efficiency to research the ADATs. Um, otherwise, I'd work on my left two lines, but yikes, we'll work on that later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my left two lines are red all the way down. Um, but other than that, guys, I think that pretty much sums it up for the best. I, in my opinion, that's how I use it. Like I said, I got 1,100 battles in this thing. I love using this thing in ground. Every time I can use it in ground, I do use it in ground. And uh, oftentimes, I'd say probably 75% of the time, I don't even worry about bringing extra bombs and rockets. I will use just my guns and missiles. And uh, yeah. that's how long I'll, you know, that's how, what I'll use to go into battle. Um, but Exotic, do you have anything else? I, I was actually trying to think of something else to say while I'm in there, but I have no more information other than, yeah, trust your gun. You don't have to load anything else onto that aircraft if you don't have the spawn points by the end of the game and you don't even have to use the ground target bullets you can just use the oh, default and you'll also you'll get plenty yeah of thank you for saying that guys it's like an extra 300 spawn points to use the ground target ones don't it doesn't make a damn bit of difference you have a 30 mil and 1100 rounds that's and the a same lot of rounds <laughs> that's a lot of freedom going to someone they don't need ground targets trust i mean it might help you against like a t80 or something but you should be able to cripple it pretty good with with the uh with the a10 as is so it, it also costs 2800 silver lines to reload and that's money i'm not willing to spend <laughs> exactly exactly so uh but yeah other than that guys um hope this helped you guys out sorry that it was super late this this video is like two months late i've been so busy with school and trying to just get back home and get situated um but yeah if you guys uh enjoyed it uh feel free to drop a like i'm gonna put the discord in the link oh, jesus put the discord in the description uh, I'll link it there, and uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Drop a drop a comment if you want a uh, what's it called a uh, <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, dude, drop a comment if you guys want a podcast. I'm gonna keep that in. Bye bye.